Over the last decade or so, open world games have really become a huge thing. That means we have a lot of good ones, but there's also a bunch that aren't so good. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on GameRanks, 10 open world games that killed expectations. Starting off with number 10, it's Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Developed by Red Button Games for the Wii U back in 2014, Sonic Boom was an ill-conceived project right from the start. Whenever a series primarily made by Japanese developers is handed off to Western devs, fans are usually not happy but outside of controversial design changes, the real issue is that they basically gave a relatively new studio very little time to put out a game for a beloved franchise that has always been made by Japanese developers. And the game in general is therefore just a rushed mess. One of the most important things in a Sonic game needs to be a smooth frame rate and oof, this game does not have that. Right from the start, it is choppy and ugly, like the character animations are janky and off and it is so glitchy. So, for whatever reason, instead of focusing on speed, like what you would expect from a Sonic game, there's more of a, like, bewildering emphasis on slow exploration, light puzzle solving, and piss-easy brawling. It gets boring, like, fast, faster than Sonic the Hedgehog, and you've pretty much seen everything the game can do after hour one. So it's got these huge, empty, and boring-looking hub areas that you can barely do anything in. There's some annoying side quests to complete, but it's mostly just trudging back and forth to a objectives around this totally lifeless world. There were actually some pretty funny bugs at launch, but the most noticeable ones have been just patched out, so pretty much the only fun part of the game, breaking it with glitches, you can't even do that, at least not as easily as you could before. And on top of that, the music sucks. Like, even with the worst Sonic games, the music is usually awesome or decent, but not for this game. It's one of those games that's just like so bad it's funny, but it's not because you have to play it, so it's really just boring. At number 9 is Agents of Mayhem. After the awesome Saints Row games, everyone was wondering what the developers would do next. Agents of Mayhem looked to be a spiritual successor to those games, and I, I mean it was, kind of, but it was also just really boring. That's the biggest problem. Say what you want about the Saints Row games, they're not boring. You're always able to do something insane and awesome, and that should have carried over into this game, but instead, it's just really slow and tedious. Moving around feels super sluggish, weapons feel weak, the whole character swapping system makes the gunplay feel really restrictive, and the open world itself is actually surprisingly small, which could be okay for a game like this, but the activities you do in it are just painfully repetitive and uninteresting, which small world plus repetitive equals something doesn't add up. The absolute worst thing, at least to me, are the enemy bases. After you attack one in the prologue, you've basically seen everything there is to see with these places. They all look the same. The mission objectives are generally the same. It's the same thing every time you go to one, and you're forced to go to these places pretty constantly. It becomes a boring slog after like the third one, and there's like a dozen more you have to deal with after that. Like Saints Row combined with G.I. Joe should have been a slam dunk, but the lack of budget seems to really have been the problem here. It's boring boring, repetitive, and the characters you can play as aren't even that interesting. It's just bad. And number 8 is Atlas. Released in 2018 to a surprising level of hype, expectations were pretty through the roof for Atlas. The trailer shows this amazing world dense with people where there's adventure around every corner and anything could happen. The actual game, though, was basically a reskinned Ark Survival Evolved that was somehow even more grindy and janky. That's basically what it ended up being, ARK but with boats. And while the developers have continued to chip away with ARK with constant updates that have been met with some positive reception, I, it's been mixed, but it's still been better than Atlas, which has only gotten sporadic updates. We live in a world where games like Sea of Thieves and No Man's Sky have been able to totally turn their games around with post-launch content, but Atlas is one game that has stayed mostly the same. It's still the same ugly, tedious survival game it was at launch, with UI elements that still look like placeholder. I mean, at the very least, you can still make horrible little troll people in the character creator, so the game isn't all bad, but the actual game is just a frustrating and confusing mess. 
And number seven is Dead Rising 4, which is kind of a sad one, actually. Uh, Dead Rising is a franchise that was fun. It was an interesting zombie brawler that had one big divisive mechanic. I'm talking about the time limit. They put you on a clock, and they made you really think about how long any given thing you did would take. And because of that, it could be really frustrating and nerve-wracking sometimes. But it was a really unique game. And if you were cool with the time limit thing, it could be a ton of fun. But what does Dead Rising 4 do? Well, it basically removes anything that made the series unique and interesting. Time limit, gone. Psychos, gone. Interestingly dense, enclosed world like the mall from the first game, or the casino street for the second, gone. You're just in a snowy town now. Like, the weapon crafting is still in, and it is fun as ever, but the whole thing feels kind of soulless in comparison to the previous games. It's something that's really hard to describe. The story is bland, the combat is simplified, it's just all around kind of dumbed down. The Dead Rising series used to be games that weren't afraid to take risks and be totally unique, even if frustrating sometimes. But taking all that stuff out just made it a generic open world zombie game, and that kind of sucks. And number six is Homefront The Revolution. This was one I was actually really hopeful about before launch. Looked like it could be a fun alternative to the Far Cry set in a more urban environment. Yeah, the original Homefront wasn't anything to write home about, but the development had been taken over by the former Time Splitters developers, and I mean, things were looking up. But sadly, the game just wasn't that great, uh, especially on consoles. On PC, at least it ran at a decent frame rate, but the console version was just a choppy mess. It was buggy too, and not like with fun bugs like Assassin's Creed. Like you would just get stuck in the environment or it would crash, like a lot. It's hard to even qualify it as an open world game. Instead of being set in a continuous open world, it's split into a few different zones that you travel to. Like they all have the open world staples of supply caches and outposts to clear of enemies, but the zones are weirdly small, like disappointingly small, and generally not particularly fun to explore. Probably the best thing about it is the Time Splitters 2 remaster that was hidden as an Easter egg. Like that's an awesome addition, but the rest of the game is an easy pass. And number five is Road Rage, which we had to include at least one totally forgotten piece of junk on here, and Road Rage fits that bill pretty nice. Released in 2017, this game is like if one of the thousands of terrible GTA ripoff phone games somehow got into a console marketplace and was sold for 20 bucks. That's about the level of quality we're talking here. Starting the game up immediately spells trouble. The opening cutscene is just white text over panning shots. It looks like a placeholder graphic, and it goes on for way too long. Once you're actually in control, things actually get worse. Moving around feels like skating on a frictionless surface rather than driving a motorcycle. And you'll get stuck on random bits in the environment. And you'll clip through walls like it's just nothing. The whole thing has the stink of a cheap Unity flip. Like it feels like an alpha rather than a completed game. It's all around just not fun to play at all. You might get a few minutes of enjoyment out of crashing into things and seeing what happens. But that's optimistic. There's hundreds of unfinished games out there where you can do that. Uh, this just straight up sucks. And number four is Driver 3. Uh, you can't bring this game up enough when you're talking about bad open world games. This game tried to be a GTA killer, but instead it killed the Driver franchise. Outside of that one last attempt to keep the franchise alive, Driver San Francisco, which is actually a great game, uh, the Driver series is buried six feet under, and a big part of that is how bad this game turned out. Funny thing is, there are defenders of this game. It has fans among a certain section of gamers, and that's cool with us. This is one of those love it, hate it kind of games, like some people like it for what we're trying to do, but other people can't look past its issues. Um, I fall into the latter category. Uh, there were issues. The biggest problems this game had at launch were the bugs and the performance. It was buggy as hell, it ran like crap. The open world was half-baked and pretty boring to explore, even if the world it created was massive, covering three major cities, Miami, Nice, and Istanbul, which is impressive. There just isn't much to do in any of them. Like, it's, it's an ambitious title. Driver 3 tried a lot we can't deny that but they just couldn't keep up with what rockstar was doing and maybe shouldn't have tried i mean where's driver now and number three is Dynasty Warriors 9. I did the BYB for this game, and I was not happy with it. It's one of the more misguided entries in a long-running franchise. The Dynasty Warriors games are all about running around massive battlefields and destroying hundreds of enemies with ease. These games are all about getting straight to the action, and that is where this series is at its best. So, uh, the developers decided to do something, I guess, 
quote-unquote groundbreaking with the ninth entry, uh, they added a bunch of boring crap to do in between the battles. And it's actually worse than it sounds because the possibility of exploring warring states period China sounds interesting, but the world they created is not interesting to even look at. It is barren and empty and dull and looks like more like an old Korean MMO than uh, an open world game. And in a lot of ways, that's actually kind of how it plays. In fact, a single player MMO is probably the best way to describe how this game plays. And because of that, it is boring and lifeless. Quests are just crazy boring. And most of the side content is like fetch quests and other tedium. Yeah, they added a grappling hook, which is nice. It's fun to use for about five minutes, but the gameplay is just so dry and dull. Why have the open world parts? They just drag the rest of the game down. The big battles are still fun, but they just kind of remind you like, oh yeah, this used to be the whole game as you run back and forth in between two far away cities with some item you are supposed to grab. I hate it. I hate this game so much. And number two is Deadly Premonition 2, which let's just say is a weird game because maybe it was supposed to be bad on purpose. I don't know. It's basically a Twin Peaks type game conceived by a Japanese game developer named Sweary65. And the game built up a cult following for its interesting and quirky story. And it also has a bunch of so bad it's good game qualities. Nobody in a million years ever expected a sequel to the original, but in 2020, Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise was released as a Nintendo Switch exclusive. And it it kind of ended up being a huge problem like it it's the frame rate it's bad like really bad i don't think i can describe with justice how bad it is look just look at the footage like even people accustomed to slower games on the switch struggled with this game like remember this is a system where breath of the wild runs with a generally consistent and good frame rate while this game which doesn't look nearly as good as that game seems to be struggling at all times the open world aspects that many fans loved the first game have returned but with one fatal flaw that makes them all but pointless. In the first game, you get cool rewards like new weapons, but in this game, basically all you get for doing any of the generally boring side content is crafting materials and junk. So there's basically no incentive to do any of that crap. There's a lot of other problems with the game, but it would be impossible to list all of it here. Maybe it was intentionally made to be bad to capture the so bad it's good feeling from the first game. Maybe not, probably not. Seems like a no, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's a game that many fans of the original who had a high tolerance for jank just had to put down. The game was too janky, even for people who were fans of jank. And finally at number one, it's Raven's Cry. Like this is a game that went viral for Let's Plays for just being bad. Do you remember it? It got huge for just being terrible. Like every Let's Player out there gave this game a shot and it was always funny. The state the game was released in was just atrocious. It had constant game breaking bugs and issues, terrible combat, no optimization. And they did actually fix a few of the bugs in the game. And they then tried to re-release the game on Steam as Vendetta. Data, Curse of the Raven's Cry, but it's the same game with most of the same issues, so this renaming, it, it didn't fool anyone, and frankly, it was a very silly move to try. It's just an all-around terrible game that remains, even today, a big buggy mess that is unfun to play, consistently ridiculous looking in action, especially during the on-foot combat, and just horribly unoptimized. This one Steam reviewer had the right idea, just throw it into the sea, it's not worth your time. But that's all for today, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, if you liked this video click like if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week the best way to see them first is a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks